this is the turbo manifold for the 13B REW that's going to live in my BMW i8, and it's 3D printed in Inconel. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about 3D printing. Not just any 3D printing, but something that I thought was reserved for the likes of automotive OEMs or builds with an unlimited budget. That is 3D metal printing, which leads me to introduce a new partner of the channel with CraftCloud. If you're familiar with services like Send, Cut, Send, where you simply upload your CAD file, select a material, and if you didn't screw up the design, you get a perfectly fitting part delivered to your door a couple days later. CraftCloud offers a similar model, but instead of laser cutting parts, they're your one-stop shop for all things 3D printed. Not only can you choose from the usual 3D printing materials such as PLA, ABS, nylon, PETG, but you can also choose things like aluminum or stainless steel or even some more exotic materials. This is the turbo manifold for the 13B REW that's going to live in my BMW i8, and it's 3D printed in Inconel. I'm going to walk you through the basics on how to create your own 13B manifold in Fusion 360, and then walk you through the process of ordering one through CraftCloud and what you might expect to pay for one. So let's jump right in and start designing a manifold. I went with the style of construction because the axle shaft was so close to the exhaust ports even after rotating the transmission about 2 degrees. This way we can still fabricate a free flowing manifold but not be restricted to the limited bend radii that are available through standard fabrication components. Alright, let's get into it. So you'll probably notice from the start that this is not in a transverse layout, but instead for this purpose I decided to use a rear wheel drive chassis. In this case, it is a BMW E30 engine bay scan, or at least the passenger side thereof. I had the motor roughly in an approximate position that might be reasonable for the car, uh, as well as the scan of my Borg Warner 8374. Uh, you can see that the wastegate actuator clears the frame rail. You have plenty of room for a downpipe and uh, while this uh, could probably use a little bit of fitment tweaks if this was a real turbo manifold, it's going to be good enough for our purposes. So before we get into it too far, we need to set a parameter configuration. And this is going to allow us to control the wall thickness of our manifold without having to change a bunch of sketches down the road. So we'll pick three millimeters for now. Configure, click OK. At this point, we can get rid of our engine bay scan, our turbo, and our motor. And we're going to activate the manifold that we can keep all of our sketches, bodies, and components uh, within the manifold. First thing we're going to do is create a sketch on the side of the flange that is closest to the motor. Hit P to project the geometry. Hit o to offset for our wall thickness. And if you begin to type wall, it will automatically fill. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. We can finish this sketch. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side of the turbo flange. P to project. Offset. And then we're going to want to create a center point reference. select our lines, we're going to hit X to make them construction, and we're going to select the spline tool, select one center point, you need to make sure that 3D sketch is checked off here in your sketch palette, hit enter, we're going to do the same thing again, center point, center point, hit enter, then we're going to make our control handles parallel with the flow of our exhaust. You can just pick any parallel line on the flange. With the spline, you want to use as few control points as possible, ideally just the two ends. Uh, if you add a bunch of points uh, throughout, then the geometry can get a little wonky, so you want to keep things as simple as possible. So next we want to select the loft tool, and you're going to select all of the geometry that we want. I usually go from the center outward. I don't think it particularly matters. And then we're gonna click a center line guide rail because that is not an ideal shape. And we'll click new component. Bring our 
sketches back into view. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side to create another loft. Put our center line guide rail, new component. All right. So we already have something that is reasonably starting to look like a turbo manifold and we've not really done much so far. So next, what I like to do is combine the runners into the flange. That way we don't have any bizarre overlapping geometry once we shell the runners out. So the target body is going to be our flange. Tool bodies are going to be the runners. We'll make sure that we keep our tools. Click OK. And we're going to want to do the same thing on the turbo flange. Target body, tools, click OK. And we can hide our sketches. And then the next thing we're going to do is to shell our runners. You're going to click both ends, use our wall parameter, and we've got a nice consistent wall thickness tube that is three millimeters thick all the way through. And we're going to do the same thing on our other runner. And there we have it. So next we're going to combine all these. Single solid body, click join, and then we're going to click new component. This way we can make a few different iterations if we want to and um, still keep our original parts and modify as required. So we're going to hide that. We're going to activate our merged manifold. We'll just rename this. Okay, so we could actually call it done right now if we wanted to. We have a complete solid body, but usually uh, there's some additional detail work that I like to do. Uh, first is to apply some fillets to the base. We're going to add a little bit more material and strength. We don't have any corners creating a stress riser. Now let's go seven millimeters on the fillet. We got some nice material there. We can also add some material at the base of the flange. So if we want to give it some more meat and support. While we could export this as an STL at this point, um, because this is going to be 3D printed in metal, going to be 100% infill and that means that the less mass that you have the cheaper it's going to be. So something that I like to do to save a little bit of material is lighten up the flange a bit. Let's do a sketch on this surface. We're going to project our geometry again. Enter. Offset the perimeter and offset all of our Hold geometry is going to go five millimeters. And then what we can do is extrude these sections down to remove a little bit of material. And then you can go through and add any sort of patterns or fillets and clean this up. And then you can do the same thing on the turbo flange. But uh, I think for the purposes of this demonstration, we can call it basically done. So right click save as mesh keep your unit type as millimeters refinement high click OK we're gonna save that let's get rid of that and we'll bring our turbo our motor and our chassis back into play we'll activate that so we can actually see something and that's pretty much it you've very quickly designed a divided internal gate 13B turbo manifold for any custom motor swap that you want to do. And realistically, this is not going to be a one size fits all solution to all of your turbo manifold fabrication needs, but this is a really nice viable option that is available without a whole lot of work. Now let's go take a look at what it would actually cost to turn this thing into a real manifold. So head on over to craftcloud3d.com or hit up the link in the description. You click to upload your models. You can just activate one model to get a single price. You're immediately presented with an exhaustive range of possible materials to choose from. We could probably spend more than an hour looking through all of these, but for today's purposes, we only care about steels and alloys, which you can easily filter on the sidebar. You're basically going to have three primary materials to choose from for exhaust manifold applications. That's going to be 316 stainless, titanium, or in canal. And then you can go through and iterate and select which model that you want. 
and it will update the pricing accordingly. We're already at a lower cost with the two millimeter wall. And then even more so if we lighten up the flange a bit. So here's the cost breakdown. I have three different variants. The first being the manifold with zero lightning in both three millimeter and two millimeter wall thickness. We have that same two millimeter manifold with the flanges lightened up. And then finally, we have the I-8 swap manifold, which is about three quarters of the size as the other two to give a uh, further example. The most budget option is gonna be your 316 stainless, followed by a titanium and then Inconel. You see the price decline with the material usage. The titanium and Inconel are gonna stretch a lot of budgets and are probably not reasonable for most builds, but the 316 option is actually really intriguing. If you compare the prices of the Lighten Manifold or even the I-8 Swap Manifold, you're right in line with retail prices of, we'll call them off the shelf options that currently exist. You're not gonna to wanna to choose this option from something you can readily buy from another vendor. Um, there's a lot of manufacturers out there such as TurboSource that make absolutely awesome 13B manifolds for RX-7 chassis. If you have an oddball engine swap, this is definitely a viable option over your normal cut and welded uh, stainless steel or other material manifolds. Let's select the two millimeter light inversion. You're then presented with a couple options for surface finish. Select the one you want. You may have another option for color. And then you're presented with a number of options for different vendors uh, located all over the globe. You could pick the one that makes the most sense for you based on cost or lead time. In this case, an extra 15 bucks and a couple days off production time is something that my impatient self would always choose. You go to checkout, and if you check out the description, you'll find a discount code that will get you 10% off your first purchase with CraftCloud. And in the case of a turbo manifold, that is not an insignificant amount of money. In this case here, you're saving yourself over 80 bucks. Less than two weeks later, you'll have a fully custom one-off manifold delivered to your doorstep. And when your manifold arrives, it's not gonna be usable directly out of the box. You're gonna to have to do at least a little bit of post-processing. Overall, the surface finish is really nice. You have some evidence of support removal. You can tell that it is 3D printed. There are a few indications of some light layer shift, but we have really high detail, particularly on the threads, which are only gonna require a chase with a tap to clean them up. We're really happy with the result. Everything fits as expected. The studs were a little bit tight, so I opened them up a couple thou. Uh, that's something to be expected. I typically size the holes pretty close to the stud with the anticipation that I'll have to open them up. That way, if I have to drift them in one direction or another, that allows me to do so. In this case, I had to make no directional adjustments, just open them up a couple thou and it bolted right on. Next, we gotta go through and clean up our threads. First, the eighth inch MPT. The NPT threads were the hardest to clean up because due to the taper, the deeper you go, the more surface contact you have with the tap and it begins to get pretty difficult to turn. You wanna make sure you use plenty of lubricant. In this case, I use something called Tap Magic, which works really well on a number of different materials. The M10 threads for the turbo flange taps significantly easier. And aside from a little effort to get the M10 by one and a half tap started, everything taps very smoothly thereafter. I did go and invest in fresh taps for all of these because Inconel is not the easiest material to cut. Having most of the threads printed was significantly easier than starting with just the uh, proper drill size for the tap. Next we're on to the belt sander. The engine side of the manifold required the most cleanup there was a small step above the exhaust ports that measured uh, about 0.2 millimeters deep. That was nothing that an 80 grit followed by a 120 grit uh, sanding belt wasn't able to take care of pretty quickly. And 
Everything fits up great on the motor. Turbo bolts up and is exactly in the position that we need it to be. And here we have our finished ready to use turbo manifolds. Uh, both flanges have been belt sanded flat. Have nice smooth gasket sealing surfaces on both of those. All of our threads have been cleaned up with a tap. Those are all ready to use. We already got our turbo studs installed. I realize that I haven't really touched on any of the design features on this yet. Um, it is a 13B divided T4 manifold, obviously for an internally wastegated turbo. And there are a number of threaded bungs on the manifold. The two that are closest to the ports are gonna be EGT probes, exhaust gas temperature. The two that are closer to the turbo flange are going to be exhaust back pressure. And then a unconventional layout is I have two O2 sensors uh, pre-turbo. Now, traditionally you wouldn't wanna do this, but Bosch has a relatively new sensor called the LSU ADV Pre-Turbo that is designed specifically to mount um, a head of the turbocharger and has some in-canal um, heat shielding on it. Now, if I end up burning up O2 sensors, then I'm still gonna use the one in the downpipe as my primary tuning tool, but this is really to monitor the difference between rotors and adjust any of the um, rotor to rotor fueling and or ignition. Unfortunately, the max ECU is not compatible with these O2 sensors. So I'm going to have to integrate the circuit for those into my own controller that I'm gonna to have to handle some other functionality in the car. And those will send data to the max ECU over CAN bus. Uh, a couple other things to note about this. The manifold uh, weighs just over five pounds. Uh, so it's not particularly light. If I was going to fully leverage the strength properties of Inconel, I probably could have done half the wall thickness on this and not only saved a bunch of weight, but a bunch of cost as well. But um, because the turbo's out at such an angle from the motor and we only have two runners instead of uh, four or six, I decided that the extra material um, wasn't necessarily a bad idea and I'd rather go overkill on something that was gonna be this significant of an investment on my turbo system. So this video is primarily about a 13B manifold, but you might be thinking, what about a four cylinder or six cylinder manifold or another part that I might integrate into a larger fabrication? So here's two quick examples to cover both ends of those spectrums. The first example is an absolutely atrocious BMW M50 turbo manifold that I used to give an example of how much material we might expect to see in an inline six cylinder manifold. Again, you have a really good example of a turbo manifold that's not particularly cheap. If you compare it to a higher end off the shelf, call it retail manifold, you're still within the ballpark for cost. So it's definitely attainable for a typical higher end build. Now, the other example that I found is actually what I believe to be the perfect use case for most people on 3D printed metal. Found a three into one collector on GrabCAD, has some great uh, flow and geometry to it, but it's something that would be kind of a pain in the ass to fabricate from traditional tubing. If we go and upload that file to CraftCloud, you see that you can buy that for less than 40 bucks delivered to your door. So say you have a really challenging collector with some really tight merge or some super tight radii bends that you need to come off that would be difficult to impossible to weld. This is a really great use case for, you know, probably less than 100 bucks that's going to save you hours of fabrication. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the next episode, we're going to take a look at the intake manifold side of things, which is also 3D printed, but going to require uh, a bit more post-processing and assembly. So stay tuned for that.